What's up, Internet World? Matthew here. Today is Monday, October 23rd, 2017. I am in the beautiful Cold Spring Harbor Hills Trail. Right away, I want to apologize for the extended silence between this blog and my last one. Uh, at the end of my last piece, almost four months ago, I had mentioned that I was feeling a lot of joy and a lot of gratitude and I was seeing a lot of abundance coming into my life and I was just hoping that I could keep that going. Um, there's been some ups and downs. I definitely had at least one depressive cycle that I can recall. Uh, yet, at this point, I'm feeling more joy and more gratitude and I'm seeing more abundance come into my life right now. And to find out how I've been able to do this, I need to turn the clock back a couple thousand years to the time of Plato to talk about his allegory of the cave, which is found in his famous work, The Republic. Now, the allegory of the cave is a thought experiment uh, where he considers the case of three men or four men, however many, chained up in the cave in the dark recesses at the back of a cave since birth. And in front of them is a big wall Behind them is either a stage or a road, and behind that is a fire. Uh, and every day, people and objects would pass by, and they would see, these men would see the shadows on the wall, and they would hear the echoes of what was passing by behind them. Now, they couldn't turn around, but they could look forward, and they saw these shadows, and they came up with their own words for them. Uh, they came up with their own words for the sounds, the echoes, their own language. So then what happens later on is, one of the prisoners gets free and he goes up to the surface and he sees the world in all its colored three-dimensional glory and he learns what these objects really were, what the sun really is. So he goes back into the cave but he's poorly adjusted to the darkness and he tries to free his fellow prisoners but they don't understand what he's talking about. They, they can't comprehend what he's trying to tell them is outside. They think he's crazy and they kill him. Well, when I was growing up, most of my life I wanted to be considered a good Christian. So I made the mistake of believing that any part of me, of my psyche, of who I was, that didn't conform with what I was told with biblical standards, had to be locked up, suppressed in the back of my own mind. Could never come out. Well, <clears throat> I cast judgment on myself, on things that I didn't think were good enough for what I was told God's standards were. I was constantly being told what he liked, what he didn't, and I was told that to see the world as this dreary, imperfect mess that he needed to, at some point, come down and wipe clean. Well, as a result, my misplaced judgment on myself was projected forward to everyone else. In one sense, I acted and thought like I was better than everyone, but in another sense, I was constantly thinking of myself as the worst creature on earth. I would master double-think, and it led to a lot of rage and anger and a lot more psychological and emotional problems. I didn't have any real deep connections with anyone. There was always a kind of wall between me and everyone else. So, what happens in my case, and in the case of other people who have lived similar, who have had similar experiences, you see reality eventually comes through. It always wins. You always somehow end up under the light of the harsh sun. When I live, realized that I had been living shackled in the dark for so long, staring at mere shadows of reality, I eventually came out and saw the world in all its beautiful, three-dimensional, colored, imperfect form. And I came to appreciate life exactly as it was. Then eventually I just fell in lust with the world as it was and all this color and shape and this form, this vitality. I threw out the concepts of good and evil. All black and white things were tossed aside and as I said in one of my earlier blogs, it was a friend of mine who said, wait a second, don't throw all that away. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's some value in it. And I realized I had still been casting judgment on myself and on things because that was just how I was used to it. Just as the men who were chained in Plato's cave only saw two-dimensional objects as the only thing they understood, their only frame of reference. They couldn't understand three dimensions. For so long, I didn't understand life 
without judgment. Now, we all do this all the time. We're always rendering judgment. Now, an assessment is one thing. Understanding if a person may be a potential threat is good for your safety. But judging people as far as if they're good enough to associate with or, I mean, hell, I can't even stand here and list examples. As I say it, I'm hoping you can reflect on your own mind and your own life and maybe the lives of other people around you. It's not just the simple nose, looking down your nose and judging. It's an assessment through a lens that isn't yours. You're given the concepts at an early age. When you're too young to fight back. You're chained to these concepts that we all live with, and that we all judge the world through. Over the past few months, I've really worked on letting that go. It's taken some time. I'm not perfect at it. I screw it up all the time, but I'm not judging myself for it either. So, I'm going to carry this on in the next vlog, go into a little more detail, and I hope you stick around. If you like what you heard here, please comment, share, subscribe, and as always, I appreciate you listening in. I hope I was able to share some good information with you, and I wish you all peace, love, and protein pancakes. Oh, and I promise not to take too long next time.